Hi, everybody in YouTube. Welcome back to another Chem Complete episode. Professor Tomney here, and we are going to continue with some of our Organic One lectures today, in which we're going to look at the idea of functional groups or functionality on organic compounds. So this is a very, very important lesson. It's going to be kind of simple. There is some memorization that goes with this, but it's absolutely essential that you understand how to differentiate between functional groups. That's almost how all organic chemistry textbooks are broken down. You're going to have a chapter on alcohols. You're going to have a chapter on aldehydes and ketones, right? You're going to have a chapter on carboxylic acids, etc. So it's very important that you understand what a functional group is, be able to identify functional groups, because as we go down the road, functional groups are really going to be the sites where reactions take place on organic molecules. All right, so what are functional groups? Functional groups are really groupings of atoms that are going to give rise to some sort of characteristic chemical behavior or chemical reactivity. So what do I mean by this? For example, if you were to take a look at ethanol, the type of alcohol used in drinks, like drinking alcohol, it is CH3CH2OH. Okay, and this functionality, not surprisingly, is called an alcohol. Now, sometimes you may hear this referred to as a hydroxyl group if people are naming the compound and there's some other sort of functional group present. But this is an alcohol. Alcohols are a type of functional group, and they give rise to certain chemical behavior and reactivity. Right? So the fact that I could have hydrogen bonding here, that's a result Remember, hydrogen bonding is an intermolecular force, but that's a result of the OH group that's present here. So if I had something like an ether, which would look like this, I would not have the hydrogen bonding because I only have the oxygen. It doesn't have a hydrogen attached to it. So down here, I would not have hydrogen bonding with an ether, but up here, I would have hydrogen bonding present with alcohols okay so that's a general idea of functional groups again I, I'm really going to stress that being able to identify key organic functional groups and understanding that behavior the, the behavior that each individual functional group has is probably or I would say arguably one of the most important factors in terms of having success in organic chemistry you have to be able to identify functional groups and where your reaction is going to take place on a molecule um, all right, so functional group classes. They can really be broken into three major classes. One, or the first class, would be carbon to carbon functional groups. So what do I mean by this? I mean that there's a carbon bonded to some other carbon. So these groups would include, and this one's kind of debatable here, alkanes, okay, every single organic compound, almost every single organic compound, can be considered an alkane. An alkane is nothing more than hydrocarbons. Okay, Hydrocarbons that are sp3 hybridized all the way around. So in other words, what does that mean? That means that there are no double bonds and there are no triple bonds. Essentially, there's no pi electrons that are present if you're dealing with an alkane, right? So after that, we get alkenes, E-N-E-S, and this is going to be a hydrocarbon, I'm gonna abbreviate here, this is gonna be a hydrocarbon that would be sp2 hybridized and would include a double bond between the carbons. Okay, so there would be a double bond present for an alkene. So we're looking at anything where I would have something like this in a molecule, a C double bonded to another C. And then we have alkynes. And similar, again, it's going to be a hydrocarbon, but now it's going to be SP hybridized. And we're dealing with triple bonds So a carbon triple bonded to another carbon is going to be an example of an alkyne. Okay? So if we have alkynes, 
we're dealing with sp hybridized linear carbons and then the final grouping here that we're going to come across is aromatics okay? and they get their name because many aromatics have pleasant smells like benzaldehyde smells like almonds vanillin smells like vanilla so aromatics get that name they also you're going to see several potential names you may see them referred to as aryl groups and you may see them very often referred to as aryenes all of which are discussing or talking about aromatic groups now aromatics are a whole entire class and they're kind of complicated to explain especially as you're first starting chemistry out it's usually reserved for second semester chemistry when we deal with aromatics in first semester chemistry the only aromatic that we're going to be concerned with at this point is benzene and like I said, there will be other ones that we come across, but they're a little bit hard to classify when we try to talk about them, at least at the beginning of uh, organic chemistry, the first semester. So this is benzene. And if you ever see this group hanging out, this is an aromatic. And it's important to note that when I have something like this, where I have alternating double bonds around the six-membered ring, this is aromatic okay these are not alkenes however if I have a ring where I just have one double bond or I have two double bonds but they're not alternating in this format these would just be considered alkenes double bonds okay so these would be alkenes they would not be uh, arenes aromatics whatever you want to call them okay so that's the first group. The first group is carbon, carbon bonds. We have alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, and aromatics. All right. So round two, we're going to start expanding the, the different groups that we have. Now we can have carbon bonded to some other atom that's not a carbon, right? So some of the most common ones in organic chemistry can be nitrogens, oxygens, uh, hydrogen and carbon sort of go together as hydrocarbons. And then we can also have X, uh, where X would be a halide. So we're talking about the halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. And then you could also potentially have sulfur or phosphorus groups. We will look at one or two of the sulfur groups uh, that we could come across. So what are some of the common ones here? And you're going to see this term that I use where I put R and then some group Y, okay? So R is really equal to the rest of the molecule, which we're going to call the alkyl chain, okay? Or the alkyl portion. So what this is referring to is basically the R actually stands for rest, for rest of the molecule, okay? Meaning it's the rest of the molecule. So for example, one of the groups that we're gonna have that we've already mentioned is an alcohol and an alcohol is going to have the form ROH so what do I mean when I'm talking about this over here it means CH3OH which is methanol right and then CH3CH2OH which is ethanol and then what else do we have like isopropyl alcohol which would be rubbing alcohol all of these are alcohols and I could represent all of these as R O H where R would be this it would be this and it would be this right so R is a generic term you want to avoid using R if you're not talking in generic terms so if you want to talk to me about methanol you should not write methanol as R O H because when you write R O H the only thing I'm taking away from that as an organic chemist is that you're talking about an alcohol, not methanol, not ethanol, not isopropyl alcohol, not butyl alcohol, or anything like that. Okay? So be specific when it's required, but if you're just talking about it in general, you can use R to represent the rest of the molecule. And you'll see your instructors do that a lot. So what else do we have? We have alcohols, we have amines and amines are going to be some sort of R group 
and then we could have what would be considered a primary amine, or we could have something that is a secondary amine, right? And there would be, I'm not showing all the lone pairs here, but there would be lone pairs for each of these. So this would be a secondary amine. You could also have a tertiary amine, where you have three R groups instead of the hydrogen. That's also a possibility. All right, so all of those would be classified as amines. Another group that we have are alkyl halides. And alkyl halides are represented by R and then X, where X can equal fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. So alkyl halides are another common sort of CY functional group that you would have, carbon bonded to some other group. We can have ethers, which we also mentioned at the beginning. Ethers take the form R, O, and then instead of an H, like an alcohol, they have another R group on the other side. That would be an ether. And we can have thiols. So a thiol is a very smelly, gross smelling um, organic compound. It takes the form R, S, H, uh, similar to an alcohol. Uh, this is, thiols tend to be the types of compounds that skunks would emit. And then you can also have sulfides. Sulfides would be similar to ethers in that they are R, S, R. Okay. Uh, examples of sulfides, uh, they will oftentimes put sulfides or other sulfur containing compounds into gas. So for instance, if you leave the stove on, you have a gas stove and you can smell that rotten egg smell. That's not the gas itself. They actually add some sulfur containing materials to the gas so that you can be aware that the gas is on. Otherwise it would be odorless. Um, and that's, I mean, there's one or two others. So you could have nitro, um, we're really not going to talk a whole lot about nitro groups until second semester when we're doing aromatic reactions and a few other um, reactions. You could also have another important one that we should include here would be the nitrile group. Uh, sometimes you may see this written as a cyano group, and that is R, C, triple bond, N. Okay. So those would be some additional functional groups. And then we have our third class of functional groups, which are going to be the functional groups that take on the form R, C, double bond, O, Y. And now we already know what R is, so we're just going to jump right into this. And these would include aldehydes. So one very well-known special type of aldehyde is formaldehyde. Uh, formaldehyde is the preservative that a lot of people are familiar with. Aldehydes take on the form RC double bond O with just a hydrogen there. Ketones. Ketones are another very common functional group. You know ketones if you've ever used nail polish remover. Acetone is a type of ketone. Ketones are also very prevalent in the body. If you've burnt through all your glycogen stores and your glucose, you can convert to burning ketones from stored fat that you have, which is a, a very common thing, especially if you've been fasting or you, you had an early dinner and you wake up, uh, you know, you're breaking the fast at breakfast the next morning. Carboxylic acids would be another one. These are certainly acidic in nature. And we will talk a little bit more about acid-base behavior in the next few lectures. So carboxylic acids would take on the form R, C, double bond, O, O, H. A lot of people will sometimes see these written as Q in the book, C, O, O, H, which is also representative of this right here. You can have esters, which are sort of the counterpart to ethers. So esters are going to be R, C, double bond, O, O, R. And then there's a couple of others that we can talk about. So amides. 
Hamides would be R, C, double bond, O, N. I'm going to put NH2. Again, you could have N with some sort of R group there as well. This doesn't have to be hydrogen. Another one would be anhydrides. These guys are kind of unique in the way they look compared to the others because they really have two uh, what we would call carboxylic or carbonyl groups right here. So an anhydride would be R, C, double bond, O, O, C, double bond, O, R. And these R's do not have to be the same. They could be different from one another. It's this portionality in here that makes up the anhydride. And then one of the final ones that we talk about are acid, and sometimes you'll see these called acid halides. In reality, the only major acid halide that is stable enough to be used in reactions or that exists for any period of time would be an acid chloride. And an acid chloride is R C double bond O C L. And so these would be some examples of the third type of functionality, which involves the carbonyl group. So there, there's plenty of other functional groups that exist. These are some of the important major ones. And that's about it. You're going to need to know these, make sure that you study them, and I will do one or two practice sessions where we are identifying functional groups uh, coming up right after this. So I hope that this video was helpful for you guys. Again, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you found it useful. And thank you for taking the time to learn with me today. I will see you guys for the next video. Take care.